Hi everyone. Um, so this is setting up the simplex method. I've just realised the mic I'm using is quite far away, so I'm just going to move the mic so it's a little closer. So hopefully you can hear me right. Right then, so this is actually off the 2022 paper. So it's pretty relevant and quite new. <clears throat> so what I did, when I did this question, first of all, numbered all the inequalities uh, oh, I numbered the equations to create them into inequalities. Because the first part of the question wants you to create the constraint and then change it into something for simplex. So for the first one, I had that as y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So put it down here. So the first one I had as y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1, which is kind of like y minus 2x is less than or equal to 1. So then if I change it into something for simplex, I've got y minus 2x plus s1 is equal to 1. So remember, you're adding on that value, so you can definitely move it up to the line. Right, so for the second one, it was a, a 7x plus 2y is less than or equal to 46. So 7x plus 2y is less than or equal to 46. So that kind of transferred quite nicely to 7x plus 2y plus s2 is equal to 46. Uh, the third one I had is x plus y is less than or equal to 8. And remember, the reason I'm doing simplex on these is because it's less than or equal to all the time. Uh, if it's greater than or equal to, I need to do two stage on big M. Uh, X plus Y plus S3 is equal to 8. And then the last one I had was X plus 2Y is less than or equal to 12. Which gave um, X plus 2Y plus S4 is equal to 12. I've got my P somewhere. Where's my, my where is it? Here we go. No, yeah, X plus K Y. So I've got my profit equation. So I need to take that over as P minus X minus K Y is equal to zero. When you put it into your tableau in minutes, make sure you get your X and your Y values right. Right, so let's have a look. So that first one, um, so I've got minus 2x plus y plus one lot of s1, no lots of s2, no lots of s3, no lots of s4 is equal to 1. Now remember the old papers, the old decision 2 papers, the modular papers, didn't use s1, s2, s3, they used r, s, t, and u. So just be careful there. Right, so because I'm set up the S1, I'm going to call that S1, because I've added that slope variable. So same for the next one. So that's going to be a 7, a 2, a 0, 1, 0, 0, 46. And an S2, because that's the one added in. Then for my S3, it's 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 8. S4, uh, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 12. And then my P line is minus 1, minus K, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. There. That's that bit done. <laughs> uh, I've set that up, so hopefully that's okay. My plan is I'm setting the p equal to zero. I'm setting the, if you look at these kind of constraints as I set them up, if I try and read them off, I'm reading off x is zero here, uh, and y is zero. And I'm saying that um, s1, because that's a one and zero, that s1 is equal to one. I'm saying that s2 is equal to 46. And I've got my p equal to zero as well. s3 is equal to is 8 and s4 equals 12. And I'm trying to sit myself on the origin. I'm trying to sit myself on the origin 
And then I'm going to do the ratio test to find the closest leap for my next vertex to solve it using the matrix method. So that's kind of it. Um, right, have fun. Bye.